Hello, welcome back to Three Phase Circuits. We're finally going to talk about the Y loads and the complex power in the uh, Y loads. So, in the last section, we talked about the real power. At, at nauseum, we went through how to calculate just the real part of the power given various things in a Y circuit. Now, we're going to talk about the Q part, the, the reactive power, and then we're going to put it all together in terms of its uh, complex power. P plus JQ, which is S, okay? So we're going to start from the same exact starting point. We have the P, which you can calculate with any circuit element, and the Q, you can calculate for any circuit element. And I'm going to kind of go through this a little faster because we've done a lot of the groundwork in the last section. So we can say V per phase Q is the per phase Q. We call that Q phi, that's the reactive power per phase, notice that the reactive power of any element is this guy, and since we know that the voltages, the magnitudes are the same across every phase, just like we talked about before, and the same with the currents, then we can say it's V phi times I phi. These are magnitudes of the RMS values of the voltage and the currents per phase times the sine of, uh, we're going to redefine this guy, per phase theta phi. So this is extremely similar to the equation we had for P, the, the, real, the real power per phase. The only difference is this was a cosine in the past, now it's a sine. And that's just because here. So for per phase, they're all the same. Per phase, they're all the same. Per phase, this difference is all the same, so we start here. And then we can say that the total power is just going to be 3 times uh, the, power per, the reactive power per phase. So I'm going to circle these because you'll see these written in your book. So if for some reason you know you calculate through the course of the problem statement, you know the phase uh, voltage here, magnitude, VAN, just the magnitude is all you need, and the current magnitude going into that circuit element, the magnitude of this current going through that circuit element, you'd put those two numbers there. And if you knew the phase difference, the phase, the theta V minus theta I, the phase difference across that element, then you would take the sine of that, multiply all this stuff together, and you would get the reactive power for element any one of the three elements, A, B, or C, multiply by three and you get the total reactive power. Again, in reality, that's a little bit cumbersome. Usually when you solve three-phase circuits, you'll have the full phaser, and if you do, then you can calculate com complex power directly. But sometimes they'll craft problems so that you can't really do that. Like maybe they'll take all the, the phase information away and it'll be easier to do it this way or something. So uh, that's why you need to know where these things come from. Now, just like before, this is calculating the reactive power if you know the phase quantities. But what if you don't know the phase quantities? What if you know the line quantities? So in terms of the line voltage, right? Because remember, line voltage and phase voltage is different for a, uh, for a Y circuit. Then again, I've done, done this in the, in the past, you know, but what we're going to do is we're going to start here, so we're going to say QT, 3 times this, so it's going to be 3 times this, 3 times V phi, I phi, sine of theta phi. Okay, that's just 3 times that. Now remember, this phase is exactly, the phase current and the line current are exactly the same. Phase current and line current are exactly the same. But the voltage is different, and we've gone through this in the last section, so what you're going to have here, just so we don't regurgitate the same things over and over again, you're going to have three. Open up a parentheses, you're going to have VL, the line voltage, divide by the square root of three. Then IL is exactly the same as I phase and line current are exactly the same, so we're going to leave it there, sine of theta phi. And then we can do the same, getting rid of the square root on the here, multiply by square root of three over three, simplify.